It's good to be back in the house of the Lord on a beautiful Sunday evening. And God gave us a great day of worship and praise this morning. And I came back tonight with my cup ready. I want a little bit more, Jesus. Fill my cup to overflowing. And, and my prayer is that you came with that same attitude. So if you feel like I do, let's stand right now and go before him in prayer. Invite God into our service. Heavenly Father, again, we're so grateful, Lord, for the privilege, God, for your mercy that's allowed us to make safe passage back to your house, God. Now, Lord, help us, Lord, to give you our undivided attention, oh God. Meet with us this evening, Father. Help us, Lord God, to achieve all that you have in store for us, to rightly apply it to our lives. And God, we'll be careful. Yes, Lord, we'll be sure to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said amen. Since the Savior found me, hallelujah. Pardon all my sins. Well, since the Savior found me, pardon all my sins. I have had the joy and living hope with him. Gone is all the shame.
I'm so glad he's my God. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Now, next week, we're going to be in conference. But Reverend Atencio is going to be here, and there will be no services missed. So let's have church. Amen. Now, I I'm going to go get some. And I'm going to bring some back for you guys, eh, right? Now, some are planning on making the trip, and, and others say uh, uh, they're going to make the next trip. But no matter what, let's keep on serving God. Can, that, that's, all, that's all that's important. It's important that we are faithful in our service to him. So we have our midweek service Wednesday night at 630. Come expecting God to do something. Prayer meeting. I'm telling you, there's power in our prayer meetings. Pastor, how can you say that? Well, one, because I'm there, but another, because I know the power of prayer. Can I get a witness? When you know the power of prayer, you know that when you're here and you feel God doing something. Uh, Renee brought the kids, and uh, uh, she, she led with one of the prayer points, and I'm telling you, there's something different when you just pour yourself into it. You, you know what I'm talking about. Now, I, I come with a prayerful spirit, but sometimes we have to make sure that we set aside. We have called prayer at the house of God. Come and get some. Watch God do a, a, bring a blessing to your life. Amen? And now, our Saturday night Bible study. I don't know where you guys were last night. Some were missing. And so I got all this extra pizza. Arthur, you got to take pizza home with you, okay? It's in the refrigerator. Wait a minute. No, y'all don't get to have pizza because I think you were the missing one. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> maybe, I, I, maybe I won't penalize you by letting the pizza go bad. So take the pizza, Arthur. <laughs> amen. But God knows. Amen, amen. So come and be a part. This is your house. God's house, amen? This is your place of worship. Come and be a part of what God is doing in our midst, amen? This time we're going to wait upon you to receive the Sunday evening tithe and offering and weekly budget offering. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to participate by way of giving. Lord, we ask that you receive our offering, bless it and multiply it as it goes forward to meet the needs. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, brother. Thank you. from God. Amen. Sister Hicks has a special tonight. Let's help us sing. I can't walk without my Jesus. Hallelujah. It used to be when I was sinning the Satan would stand off somewhere grinning as the things that he brought out just turned on me. Dear God. Like a ring falling down. 
Hallelujah. I don't want to try to do this by myself. I can't walk without my Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. And aren't you glad you don't have to try to do this on your own? I'm glad, Brother Arthur, I'm glad I don't have to try to hold this thing together. Because I fail every time. But with Jesus on my side, come on now. We are more than able. Man, God gave me some uh, good messages for this weekend. This morning we dealt with uh, a little bit of depression. When the devil lies to you, tell you you're depressed. <laughs> Look at yourself and say, so what is wrong with you? Why are you disquieted with it? Don't you know we trust in God? Well, tonight, we're talking about, nevertheless, the Lord is faithful. Amen. Nevertheless, the Lord is faithful. My Bible reading is found in Judges. Judges chapter 2. Beginning to read at verse 1. And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochum and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you into the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Wherefore I, I also said, I will not drive them from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their God shall be a snare unto you. And it came to pass when the angel of the Lord spake these words unto all the children of Israel that the people lifted up their voice and wept. And they called the name of that place Bochum, and they sacrificed there unto the Lord. And I went down a little bit further in this chapter. Began to read again around verse 11. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. Man, just five verses. They didn't make a whole five verses. Five verses down. They did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods, and gods of the people that were around about them, and bowed themselves down to them, and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord, and served Baal. Oh, man. And Ashtoreth. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he delivered them into the hands of the spoilers that spoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about them so that they could no longer stand before their enemies. Whithersoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil. As the Lord hath said and as the Lord hath sworn unto them, they were greatly distressed. Verse 16 is what I'm going to use for my text tonight. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up unto them, raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hands of those that spoiled them. Tonight, with the help of the Lord, I want to preach on a message. Nevertheless, the Lord is faithful. The Lord is faithful. Father, we see here in this Bible reading that God is dealing with us like you dealt with your children back then, Lord. Help us now, Father, to hear this message. Lord, to rightly apply it, not just to shake the finger and point fingers or, or find fault, but God begin to search our own hearts. And see, Father, if we've become wayward in our worship. See, Lord God, if we've taken our eyes off the prize. Help us to hear what thus saith the Lord and rightly apply it to our lives. And God will be careful. Yes, we'll be sure to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Nevertheless, the Lord is faithful. Here begins the sad account 
which the Holy Ghost caused to be recorded. You know the Holy Ghost caused the words of God to be printed, to be penned by men. They said, as the Spirit gave utterance. And he recorded out Israel's whoredom and their idolatry, which runs through all future periods of their history. Brothers and sisters, look at us. We're in a nation so highly blessed. I talked about it, how we got churches everywhere. We, there's an opportunity to worship God 24-7. You can find them on the internet. You can find them in your living room or on the TV. You can find them in the Bible. But people choose idolatry. They choose to worship false gods. Here's the sad story. It's a sad, sad relation of poor human nature. And more so, when we consider the resemblance it bears to the church of all ages. It's not just back then. It's going on even right now today. They serve Baal and Balaam and Asherah, a single god and double gods. And for Baal is singular, meaning one particular heathen god. And Balaam was plural, signifying many. And Ashwak was a goddess. You think about these people dabbling into that even in these days and time. People are still looking for a god, little g. When we've met the king of kings, come on now. We've met the lord of lords. In 1 Kings, verse 11, but Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Malcolm, the abomination of the uh, Ammonites. You know, it, it makes you weep. How? Just look at it. These are God's chosen people, and they failed him. God's elect, the, the people that God put his signature on. God says, boom. These are my people. You guys are special. You're special. I'm talking to you, Rista. You're special. Arthur, you're special. Yeah, you're, you know you're special, Angel. Her name is Angel already. You know she's special. Come on. You're all special. So now that you know that you're special, you belong to God. And they knew this. They had this knowledge. But just like that, they went chasing something else. Chasing the next thing. You think about it, it's painful. It's painful. It's painful to God, and it's painful to us. Ma Ma Maca, mm, Micah 6 reads, Hear ye now what the Lord saith. Arise, condemn thou before the mountain, and let, thy, let the hills hear thy voice. Hear ye, O mountains, the Lord's controversy, and ye strong foundations of the earth. For the Lord have a controversy with his people. He will plead with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done unto thee? And where, wherein have I wearied thee? Testify against me. Come on now. What, what is your statement against God? How has God failed us that we could turn our backs on him so easily? None of us can utter a word, and neither could they. But nevertheless, the Lord is faithful. Amen. Nevertheless, the Lord is faithful. So here we are in our Bible reading, and, and you know the story. Moses, and, 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 and but the mighty hand of God delivered the children of Israel out of the Egyptians' hands. They delivered them out of bondage, and, and Moses had passed on, and, and now Joshua was their leader. And Joshua was, was now uh, taking them to the promised land because now they're getting ready to receive their blessing. They've been through a lot. Remember, they've seen God part the Red Sea. They've seen God uh, uh, defeat their enemy with them not having to raise one hand. Even though they were whining and complaining all the way. Can I get a witness? Moses, you brought us out here to die. Wasn't it enough graves in Egypt? We could have just died in there. At least we'd have been buried nearby something. 
You brought us out here. But God kept on showing them. And when Moses got discouraged, Moses said, Lord, <laughs> let's just get rid of these people. <laughs> God says, come on. Get yourself together. Stretch out your rod and go forward. So here we are now. They're there. They're at the promised land. And now Joshua, this man of God, is at the end of his life. And Israel still hasn't learned their lesson. So an angel appears to them. And the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochum. And said, I have made you to go out, up out of Egypt and have brought you into the land where I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Yea, ye shall throw down their altars. But ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Wherefore, I also said, I will not drive them out from before you. But they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their God shall be a snare unto you. And it came to pass, when the angel had spake these words unto all the children of Israel, the people lifted up their voice and wept. And they called the name of that place Bochum, and they sacrificed there unto the Lord. And you know, you hear this, and you're like, well, God, they repented. It's easy to get people to repent, especially when an angel of the Lord is standing out there. He's like, I can't believe you, God. All that God has done for you, all that he's laid out for you, how he's paved a, a, a way where there was no way. He made a way. In oh, fact, yeah. he made sure when you guys left Egypt, when you left, you were slaves, but you literally left with their riches on your back. They gave to you. Remember, he told them they gave them silver and gold. Just leave. Leave now. <laughs> Take everything I got. Just go. God gave them the upper hand. But he gave them instructions. He says, the land I'm going to send you to, I want you to utterly destroy it and go and inhabit it. I don't want you to leave anything behind. Definitely don't get mixed up in their food. Definitely don't become a part of their society because they're an ungod-believing society. Remember, Jesus says, I'm going to leave you in the world, but we are not of the world. Y'all remember that part? Then why does the church try so hard to be like the world? Why is the church striving so hard? Well, I, I don't want to feel different. I don't want to feel different. I want to be Christ-like. I'm not different. They are. We're not different. They are. I, I, I'm not um, special in, in that sense. I mean, I know I'm special. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not anything special because I'm just trying to do what's right in the eyes of God. Brother Arthur is just striving to be the best Christian that he can be. That doesn't mean I'm perfect. I have not attained. You've all worked on job sites and you come in and, and you've got your Christian smile on and you, and, and you don't have to broadcast. You don't have to wear a cross on your forehead and say, praise the Lord. You know, some people look at it like, she's scary. <laughs> Something's wrong with that person over there. Most of the time, that's just putting on airs. But when you really got that sweet spirit, come on. You don't, you don't have to go around with a church card staked to your forehead. You don't have to go around wearing a cross around your neck. Your spirit will represent the Lord that's inside of you. And they'll begin to say, man, there's something sweet about you. And then you can sing that song Sister Hicks was singing this morning. Let me tell you about my Jesus. <laughs> man. Because it's real. It's from your heart. These events mark a significant change in Israel's relationship with God. God made a, a sacred and a binding agreement with Israel. It was called the covenant. Remember that, that, that covenant he made with uh, 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 Father Abraham? Get thee up. 
leave your kindred, and I'll make of you a nation. Then in, in Exodus, verse 19, he's talking to all the people. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called the elders of the people and laid before their faces all the words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the word of the people unto the Lord. They made a promise to God that they were going to be faithful. And God's part was to make Israel a special nation. How many know Israel's still a special nation? Yeah. Ain't he faithful? Yeah. He's, they're a special nation. Hey, they're a small nation, but you can't mess with them. Yeah. And those who try realize you can't defeat them because God is on their side. Oh, hallelujah. Halle I want to be on the winning side. Oh, you don't want to be with the big, strong army? No. Because Pharaoh had the army of their day. Pharaoh had the army. He had the chariots. The people were poor. They were running. They, they had animals and, and, and feeble wagons that they put together. They were running for their life. Pharaoh came out with his army ready to defend, ready to destroy them. And then God made their wheels fall off. <laughs> it's hard to fight when you fight against God. <laughs> I want to be special to God. God's job was to protect them, to give them a unique blessings for following him. And Israel's part was to love God and obey his law. You know, it's sort of like what we expect of our children. We expect our children to obey us in our home as we're raising them up. We, we expect our children to, to do those things that we tell them to do. And if they don't, then we deal with them. Yeah. Come on now. Isn't that right? Yeah. Well, how many know that we're God's children? Yeah. And he has every right to deal with us when we go in opposition to his rules. Because they rejected and disobeyed God, the agreement to protect them was no longer in effect. But listen to this. But God wasn't going to abandon his people. Aren't you glad he doesn't forget us? He might put us through some stuff, but he's always there for us. He wasn't going to abandon them. They would receive wonderful blessings if they asked God to forgive them and sincerely followed after him again. See, although God's agreement was to help Israel conquer the land, it was no longer in effect. His covenant to make Israel a nation through whom the whole world would be blessed was fulfilled in the Messiah's coming. Jesus came and did what the Father planned. Aren't you glad? Nothing we can do can stop God's plan. Nothing we can do can stop God's plan. He is going to get the job done. God forgave us. Repentance means not only confessing sin and asking God to forgive us, but also a, a, um, abandoning those sinful ways. Stop doing what you know is wrong. Sorry. I'll give you a perfect example. This hymnal hadn't done nothing to me. You say, oh, oh, why'd you hit it? I was just being mean. Well, stop being mean. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Hymnal. I shouldn't have hit you like that. And the hymnal's looking at me kind of crazy, like, okay, all right, we cool then, right? Yeah. Right, now, I just apologize. We cool, right? Yeah. And then I, hey, hey, what happened? We just resolved this. What's going on? See, God says, don't just, don't just say words out of your mouth. 
Don't say, excuse me, when you really meant to do it. You kicked them on purpose. You hit them on purpose. You did exactly what you wanted to do, and you knew that you were in opposition to God. And now you're going to say, oh, my bad. I'm sorry. Oh, I can't do that. I didn't know that. That's, that's a, that written somewhere? Yeah, God knows. He knows when we're sincere and when we're not. See, we can't do this sincerely unless we are truly sorry for our sinful actions. Tears alone are not enough. Some people think if I turn on, wait a minute, wait a minute. If I turn on my tears. <laughs> I told you, good. When the lip comes out, that's it. My grandbaby, she used to know. My wife had a daycare. My granddaughter was the only one who had upstairs privileges. Daycare kids had to stay on the first and second level. But my granddaughter can come up to the third level. That's where Papa Gus laid down. And when everybody else was in timeout, I don't know what they did. She would make her way to them steps. And she'd come pitter patter. The sister said, ah, oh, he can't save you. She said, I said, come on, girl, come on, come on. And she lay on my belly. Safety, I'm on base. Leave her alone, Sister Hicks. She said, he ain't going to be here tomorrow. <laughs> but she knew if I could go on to get to Grandpa, if I stick that lip out far enough, Grandpa will have mercy on me. God says, I'm not fooled by your tears. You can't fool me with your, with your whimpering and snotting and all those things. You've got to be genuine in your heart. 2 Corinthians 10, uh, 2 Corinthians 7 and 10 reads, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented thereof. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. God helps us to see just what we're sorry. I'm sorry for assaulting that Bible. I'm sorry for assaulting that book. And it begins to reflect in your heart and it will make you repent truly Amen. and honestly. In my Bible reading, I skipped the part when the man of God, Joshua, died. But as soon as he died, in verse 11, it reads, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And they served Balaam. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods, and gods of the people that were round about them. Sound like just what the angel said they not to do. And bowed themselves down to them and provoked the Lord to anger. They forsook the Lord and served Baal and Asherah. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he delivered them into the hands of the spoilers that spoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about them so that they could no longer, any longer, stand before their enemies. Whithersoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil. As the Lord have said, and as the Lord have sworn unto them, they were greatly distressed. See, sometimes we think we can pull one over on God. And, and then people say things like, well, if there is a God, that burns me up. Because when things are going their way, God is good. Yes, he is. Oh, highly. God, look what the Lord has done for me. But when things don't go the way they want it, if there is a God, like there's some doubt now, I've got some questions about it. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not fully come. If there is a God, why did such and such happen? If there is a God, why did we have to go through all that? Why, why did COVID get to run so rapid? Why didn't God just stomp it out? You know, sometimes I wish we were just real with ourselves and said, if there was a God, why don't he just stomp me out? Because I know I'm sinful. Just be real. Talk about it. Right. See, Balaam was a, a God of storms and rain. Therefore, 
He was thought to control the vegetation and agriculture. Asherah was the mother goddess of love, war, and fertility. And she had other names. But the temple prostitution and child sacrifice were a part of the worship to that God. We already know we don't want none of that foolishness. And they just began to follow all kinds of idolatry. And, and, and why? Because they had turned their back on the truth. Well, you know, when you turn your back on the truth, only thing that's left for you is a lie. Yeah. Only thing that's left for you is man's creation, man's attempt to get to God. We're going to come short every time. See, many things can tempt us to abandon what we know is right. That's why God, listen, that's why God told us to come out from among them and be ye separate. He said, I don't want you to mingle with them. I don't want you to meddle around with them. Well, they look like they're having fun. Yes. They're having fun on their way to hell, on their way to destruction. Do you want to go? You know, mom said, well, you, you want to follow the crowd, huh? You're going to follow them right off a cliff too, huh? No, nah, mom, I would stop before I jump off the cliff. But sometimes you don't even realize. You're just with them. Where are we going? Oh, I don't know. Just keep, hey, 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 this is, this is the end of the road. Man. Stop pushing. Stop and you're gone. And you don't know what happened. God said, what were you doing with them? I told you not to even let them stay around you. Well. See, we have a general idea of the course of things in Israel during this time. See, the judges, the, the nation made themselves miserable by forsaking a good God. They made themselves miserable by turning their back on the one that loved them. Come on, we know that. We make ourselves miserable by saying, I ain't talking to mommy. I'm not calling dad anymore. He's too strict. Telling me I got to come home by 11. I'm 12. I can come home when I... Really? <laughs> Let me know when you start paying bills, all right? <laughs> Let me know when you're running something. But in your mind, in your small way of thinking, you think that you can stand up against. And these people are talking this way to God. We laugh, but we've done it too. We've done it to our parents. We, we've done it to our employers. We act like we don't, we don't have to give an answer to anyone, but God already told us no man is an island unto himself. We all have to give an account. So they made themselves miserable. And their punishment was answer to the evil that they had done. They served the gods of the nations round about them, even the meanest of gods, and made them to serve the princes of the nations around them, even the meanest of princes. People that don't love them. People that don't care about them. You know, when we turn our backs on our family, what do we run into? Do you think the world cares anything about you, young man, young lady? Do you think the world cares that uh, you, you felt like you were deprived in your home? That your mommy didn't let you do what you wanted to do, so they're going to let you? They're not. They're going to beat you down. They're going to rip you apart. They're going to take worse advantage of you. And you're going to realize, man, I wish I had stayed home. At least mom loved me. She corrected me in a loving way. She didn't just beat me over the head and make me, because the world's not going to take no for an answer. You're going to do it their way. Or they're going to beat you down. That's how the world is. I'm glad God's not like that. He said, do you want to be stupid? Go on. Have at it. You're on your own. Those who found God true with promises may be sure that he is true about his threatenings as well. He told them, if you follow me, I got you. 
you're going to be a special people. You're going to be kings and priests under God. But if you're disobedient, I'm going to let you go to yourselves. And you, the ones that you should have been conquerors over are going to conquer you. Their punishment was that the Canaanites were spared so that they could beat the children of Israel with the rod. So those were the ones that were beating them down instead of it being the other way around. I'd rather do things God's way. If we were only obedient to God, brothers and sisters, we wouldn't go through half the mess we go through. Verse 12, he says, Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither could Neither will I be with you anymore except ye destroy the cursed from among you. Up, sanctify the people, and say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing amidst of thee. O Israel, thou canst not stand before thine enemies until thou take away the accursed thing from among you. Look at America today. We are blessed and highly favored. We got technology for our technology. We got an app to monitor our apps and how many apps we got. How many apps we got open? What's an app? We got an app to tell you about that, okay? We got so much technology that we've forgotten about what's really necessary. Because there's not an app that can save. There's not an app that can deliver. There's not an app that can step down out of glory and touch your sick and ailing body. We need God over everything. But we, we've turned to our gadgets. We've turned to our own skills. We've forgotten. And so God let them go to that place. What was the name of that city? I liked it. The name of the city they were sent to. Wait, wait, wait. I got to go back to it. I skipped over it. What's it? Yes. That literally means weeping. In their tongue, they were sent to a city of crying because they'd rather go there than where God told them to go. We make our beds hard. We make it hard, but nevertheless, God is faithful. Amen. God is faithful. He said, nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges who delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. See, now, when we hear the word judges, we're thinking about him sitting behind the, the desk, big desk, got his gavel, got his clerk, he got this, that, and the other. He got marshals. I used to be a court marshal. Don't mess up. The judge say take him in custody. Usually, he'll give me the nod, and I'll start sliding up behind him. He don't even know. Maybe every now and then you might hear a pop in the room. That's my thing. <laughs> that's my that's my job is to take you now into custody because the judge not finding in your favor. But that's not what he was talking about. These are not judges in the sense of that term, but they were heads or chiefs of Israel, raised up during extraordinary occasions, who directed and ruled the nation with sovereign power. They were able to declare war and fight wars and win them with the hand of God. These were powerful men and women that God had to raise up to deliver the children out of darkness. And despite Israel's disobedience, God showed his great mercy by raising up judges to save the people from their oppressors. Mercy has been defined as not giving a person what he or she deserves. We know we're guilty. Come on now. We know we lost our mind when we talk about, I'm running away. I'm running away. I'm taking my stuff. 
I remember saying that. Mommy said, uh, where, where is your stuff? Sh show me what you bought. Sh show me <laughs> your stuff. <laughs> uh, I mean, you gave it to me. No, no, no. That's my stuff. <laughs> I let you use it, but that's my stuff. So, uh, I said, no, no, you don't have any stuff here, so what are, what are you talking about? What are you going to take with you? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we, we get so messed up in our heads. We're talking to the creator of creations, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, and we're saying, God, I don't want to do this. I want to do it my way. We're not going to win. Well. Despite that, God, was merciful. He, would, he did that for Israel. He did not give them what they deserved, but he was merciful. Our disobedience demands God's judgment, but God shows mercy towards us by providing an escape from sin's penalty through Jesus Christ and the cross. Amen. Can I get a witness? You, he made a way that you and I don't have to go to that place called hell. And I'm so glad. He saves us to the utmost. When we pray for forgiveness, we are asking for what we do not deserve. Well. We're asking God to have mercy on me. I have sinned against you. That wayward child said, I sinned against God and before you, Dad. And I, I just want to come home and be a servant. But that dad just threw open his arms. He got so happy. He said, go get the robe. Put a ring on his finger. Get him some new shoes. My baby's home. And that's how God feels for us. Each and every one of us. We have to realize that God loves us. Throughout this period of Israel, their history, they went through seven cycles of rebelling against God, being overrun by enemy nations, being delivered by God-fearing judges, remaining loyal to God under that judge, and again, forgetting God when that judge died. We tend to follow the same cycle, remaining loyal to God as long as we are near to those that are devoted to him. But when we're on our own, come on now, when the pressures of our neighbors or our environment starts to come down on us, you got to get the vaccination, get, got to get the shot, 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 get the shot. You got to do this, you got to do this, wait, wait, wait. All I know I got to do is serve God. All I know I got to do is, is pray and seek his face. Yeah. Woo! Pastor, I'm glad you said that. Listen, again, we talked about this last night. Don't get it twisted. That's between you and God. That's between you and God. But you need to make sure that you're in God's will. Don't do it because I'm in opposition against the man. I want to stick it to the man. The man don't care. <laughs> I told you, this ain't your mom's house. He don't love you. <laughs> he don't care about you. You better look out for you. Amen. Come on now. When you're on your own, the pressure to be drawn away from God increases. You have to determine in your heart to be faithful to God. Despite difficult situations you encounter, recognize the importance of maintaining contact with other believers. Sister Samra, you know I need you. And I know that you need us. We need each other. We need each other because iron sharpens iron. Now, if I see Sister Tamara and she's slime, at, slime bagging, she knows what I'm talking about. That's some, some military lingo. Slime bagging. When you know what you're supposed to do, but you're halfway doing it. My wife say when I'm smearing the kitchen counter. 
I said, smearing? I'm wiping it down. Yeah, you just smearing it around. You're slime bagging. We need somebody that will check us and say, hey, you know you're supposed to do better than that. Hey, don't you know God is worth more than that? He's been better than that to you. You owe him that praise. You owe him the glory and the honor. Don't give it to anybody else. I thank God for brethren that'll check. I thank God for men and women all around this world who'll pick up the phone and say, are you all right, brother? I just haven't seen you in church. Are you okay, sister? How have you been? How's your prayer life? Told you I called a friend that I, I know they haven't been serving God for a while. And I said, hey, how you doing? They said, fighting a good fight. I said, oh, praise God. Oh, 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 oh not like that. Because they knew they weren't right. That should check you, right? That should make you stop and think. If you know that you're not right, why not? Because God is faithful. Nevertheless, God is faithful. Come on, I'm closing. I want to give you some scriptures to hold on to. Deuteronomy 7. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. That's a faithful God right there. Second Timothy 2 and 13. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. God is God and he don't ever change. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3. But God is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. All we have to do is call on him. God, help me. God, deliver me from this bondage of sin. I've stepped into the lion's den. And I don't want to be here anymore. God is able to deliver you. And one more. 1 Corinthians 1 and 9. God is faithful. By whom ye are called. Unto the fellowship of his son. Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Brothers and sisters. We have an advocate. He's sitting at the right hand of God the Father. And he's interceding on our behalf. And when we fail, if we fall short, we can call on him and say, speak for me. Help me come out of this darkness. He's given us access. He said, come boldly before the throne of grace in your time of need. Because no matter how far we've wandered off, Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Nevertheless, the Lord is faithful. Perhaps the devil has lied to you and said you've gone too far. Be like that wayward son. Come to your senses and say, in my father's house, there's more than enough food. All I need to do is make it back home. In the time that you came back home to your father and asked for his forgiveness. And if everything is all right, why don't you just go home and say, hey, dad, how you doing? I just wanted to check in. Let's have a little talk with Jesus.
know God, he is faithful. And I'm so glad to serve a God like him. When we fail, he's faithful. When we falter, he corrects us because he's faithful. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Father, we're so grateful, O oh Lord, that you saw fit to minister to our needs. You didn't leave us in the situation that we were in, but God, you made us special. You allowed us to be a part of your family. And now, God, help us to not uh, neglect our responsibility. Help us each become more faithful. Help us each be more like Jesus. Father, we'll give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you is our prayer. We love you. Look forward to seeing you Wednesday night, our midweek service. Pray one for another. Invite somebody to the house of God. God bless you. Consider yourselves dismissed.